of this term is dynamical activity because you see that and this is a number of jumps per unit time uh, uh, induced by the transition from y to x and summation of uh, all uh, pairs of transition so it means that total number of jumps per unit time so we call this as a dynamical activity so the integration of this dynamical activity from time 0 to t so it gives a total activity total number of jumps during time 0 to t when delta equal to 0 and what about delta equal to 1 so delta can be either 1 or 0. So what is, what is about delta equal to 1? So if we put here delta equal to 1 number, then from this, by using this definition of eta x, y, then we can, I mean, this term, this term is equal to this one, OK? OK, so let's arrange it in this way. So. Um, even though we started from the same master equation, but the Fisher information uh, becomes different, depends on delta, delta value. So when delta equal to zero, it is this, and when delta equal to one, uh, the Fisher information becomes this one. So uh, let me uh, go further with the, the delta equal to one case. So let's, here, let's define this square function as b x, y. Then, this is same as b, y, x, because uh, there is a square, square here. So b, x, y, and b, y, x. So by dividing this whole summation into two parts, so the first part is x is larger than y, and this is x is smaller than y. So we can divide it into two parts. And then here, because bxy is equal to byx, we change this. So we change it this way. And then, because x and y indices are dummy variable, so we exchange this second summation indices from xy to yx. So this is a result. And the first, first summation is same. The second summation, the indices are exchanged. So now we can add these two summations. So the result is like this. And now let's um, use the definition of bxy. So plugging this equation to here, and then this denominator is canceled out. So the remaining part is this one. OK. So now we have more, a, a, a simpler expression for uh, when delta equal to 1. And we usually call this quantity as a pseudo-entropy production. Uh, not Pseudo-entropy production is not equal to real entropy production, but in the over-dental limit of this uh, Markov jumper process, then this pseudo-entropy production approaches real entropy production. But Anyway, in this Markov jumper process, it is different from real uh, entropy production. And now I will use some uh, famous inequality, which is called log mean uh, inequality. So the left side is called log mean, and right hand side is called arithmetic mean. And we can show that this log mean is always smaller or equal to arithmetic mean. So I will use this inequality. So by changing a little bit this, we can show uh, this inequality, OK? Because uh, this is uh, this one. And we, I mean, you, you see that, right? So here, let's say that this one is A, this one is B, and this one is A plus B. So this form is same as this one right then this one is smaller than this quantity by using this inequality a minus b times logarithmic a over b and then we can rearrange this summation then we can have this relation 
And this relation is the expression of entropy production rate for a Markov jump process. So uh, it is in, so the entropy production rate and integration over from time zero to tau, then it becomes a total entropy production. So okay, let me summarize. So um, now, so we evaluate the fissure information in two cases. Uh, delta equal to zero cases, it becomes uh, the, the total activity, and when delta equal to one case, it becomes pseudo entropy production, and we showed that pseudo entropy production is smaller than total entropy production. So, uh, so uh, when delta equal to zero, so by using this Cramera inequality, so if we use uh, this quantity, then we can show this inequality. Of course, this inequality is different from the uh, uh, TUR because, uh, because this is not total entropy production. So people call this inequality as a kinetic uncertainty relation. And when delta equal to one, the fissure information is given in this way. So we can show that this relation but this is not the TUR because uh, this is uh, not the, uh, this is just a pseudo entropy production, not the total entropy production. However, we show that the total entropy production is larger than pseudo entropy production, so we can also show that uh, this is larger than this one. So finally, we can show this term is larger than this one, and this is a TUR. Okay, so in such a way, we can show um, the TUR uh, by using the Cramer-Rau inequality by starting from the time scaling perturbation. Okay, so time is over, so I think uh, it's right time to stop my third lecture. Thank you. <laughs> Any question? zero case or one case so we have different results and I wonder is there any physical interpretation for delta is there any uh, physical meaning of delta ah, I mean this delta is uh, some parameter so uh, uh, yes it's just a yeah, yeah, parameter yeah. but I guess uh, delta zero gives the dynamical uncertainty and Yes. Delta one gives uh, thermodynamic uncertainty, but these two has even a different dimension, right? Uh, uh, yeah. First one is about the kinetic rate velocity. Yeah, this is just a number. Yes, it's just number, but below one gives uh, something about the energy. So I wonder why these two have uh, has a uh, very different result because yeah. okay um, okay so uh, in in the Mar Markov jump process uh, we can count the total number of jumps in the Markov jump process so uh, this uh, total activity can be one possible I mean possible, I mean, measurable quantity. And also, we can, we can measure the entropy production in, and this entropy production is another uh, possible measurable quantity. So, uh, I mean, so depending on, depending on delta, we can make uh, some different inequality by using different, I mean, different measurable quantities. So, and usually this, KUR uh, becomes tighter when the process is very irreversible. And this TUR becomes tighter when, when the uh, process is uh, reversible. So, I mean, it has a different bound, but anyway, 
we can we can bound this relative fluctuation by using two two inequalities so we can use one of them uh, which gives a stronger bound so i mean uh, i mean that's uh, that's the meaning of these two inequalities as far as i understand uh, yes i understood thank you If, if, if delta exists somewhere between zero and one, what happens? Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I don't know whether it, uh, it results in a value of a result, but uh, actually delta is introduced here. Uh, so delta is introduced here. So this master equation and this master equation are actually they are exactly the same but when we define the trend, uh, portable transition matrix then actually they have the different form so i mean the delta comes from uh, by that defining these two uh, transition matrix so that's why it is one or zero so in, in this formalism, we cannot uh, choose the other value of delta. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have any other question? <laughs> yeah. I mean, between these two different uh, transition matrices, uh, would the dynamics change in a sense like? Dynamics are same. Di to... Dynamics are same, I mean. Yeah. Uh, so what is different? Uh, one is R and another is R epsilon. Yes. They have two different transition matrices. Uh -huh. For the same process, there are two uh, transition matrices. That gives the same dynamics. Uh, okay. So that degeneracy is possible. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's not interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, interesting point. Yeah, right. Other questions? So, <laughs> you. <laughs> Are there any finite size effects that come into these? I mean, if you consider one of these systems in a confined volume. Uh, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, this is a. I mean, exact for any any kind of system, any kind of process. So, even if it is confined in some potential or some box, I think uh, we we can come to the same conclusion. Yeah. No, I'm just wondering if there's a, a some sort of scaling relation. Uh huh. Because you know, in conformal field theories, if you have a, a, a energy momentum tensor then in finite size there's a specific central charge mm -hmm. that tells you about how it uh, scales yeah. so i'm just wondering in these non perturbations i mean in this yeah 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 right so i mean if this scaling perturbation is about the uh, position scaling then probably such problem will arise but in, in this case this is a time time scaling perturbation so we say and we are now interested in a steady state so actually it, i mean it does not make any difference even though there is a, some box potential or some kind of other constraints positional constraints other questions so <laughs> your brain must be full <laughs> <laughs> okay so why don't you start here Let's just thank uh, Professor Lee. Mm. So now we have a banquet. Um, the banquet place is the first floor of this building. So I, I want to uh, utilize this uh, opportunity to know each other. Okay. Well, let's meet at the first floor.
Same for oh, sorry, sorry. I think it's my microphone. <laughs> I, I didn't. 